Welcome back everyone, Zeke Morgan here for episode 8 in this Let's Play series of Resident Evil 7 or Resident Evil Biohazard, depending on how you call it. Hopefully you've been staying with us throughout the entirety of this series, but if you are new to join us, I want to say welcome and thank you very much for deciding to watch this video. If you enjoy it, please don't hesitate to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to show your support. And of course, we're at the stage now that Lucas has been a bit of a nasty guy and kidnapped Zoe and Maya and everyone else that we've ever cared about and locked them away in this secret area. Of course, we've managed to get the keycards, the blue and the red keycards, to go follow them and engage in this sadistic game that they wish to play, of course. In our last episode, we did go through the happy birthday uh, tape that was lying about the house in, in the uh, attic, sort of right above the kids' room, so I have a feeling that might come up. Obviously, we're loaded up a little bit for bear here. We've got the shotgun, we've got the pistol, we've got the... Um, okay, that's very weird. Let's play a game. Uh, we've got the burner and the grenade launcher, so I think we can tackle anything that Lucas throws at us. And this definitely looks like a trap, but that could just be me. Mm. Clearly he doesn't know how to set up a camera. Look at that face. That's an exasperated face of pure shock and horror. Okay then. Yes, I know what that's for. I need that. That's the D series head. Which we need to create the serum. But it is special. And I need it. So I'm going to come get it. No, don't do it. Ah, that's just, just disgusting. No, not another one. Ah. Ah. That's just disgusting. Underneath that house, but I've already got them. Okay, I don't mind that at all, Lucas. And I don't even know how he set that up. How do you know I was going to press the TV and how do you know that when it got to the end it would hurt me? Then again, he is an engineering major, so clearly he's set up all loads of things and probably some traps I'm going to have to keep an eye out for. And probably some nasty things I don't want to... Oh, what's that? Herb, thank you. Anything up there? Nope. Okay, dokey. Oh, there's a tripwire. That's ingenious. Um, okay, I was hoping I might be able to disarm that, uh, but clearly not. Just gonna have to sneak underneath it. And there we go. Just reload everything that I can. Oh, and another one. Damn, he's been very sneaky with these. Uh, done them at different angles, so I'm gonna definitely have to watch my way. Okay, no more ammo. Obviously keeping an eye out for that as well. Whoa, there's another one. So uh, from here on out, I think I'm going to have to watch where I'm going. Of course, I am keeping an eye out um, for ladders, etc. Just for that treasure map photo that we came across in the last episode. And of course, I don't really want to be activating any of these. So, oh, there we go. Got it. Oh, a repair kit. Very nice. I'm not going to complain about that. Oh, now we got two tripwires. Okie dokie. 
Uh, can I sneak? Nah, I think I might have to shoot one. Okie dokie. Where is it? I can't see it. There it is. Push! There we go. No, why not? Let's shoot them both. Yeah, um, should I? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> why not? I was trying to decide which one uh, I wanted to shoot, if not. Okay, I'm being a little bit hesitant here, probably a little bit more so than I normally would. Uh, we haven't come across any enemies in this particular part just yet, and that's one I'm expecting. Um, I don't know if he's rigged any of these boxes to explode, so that's why I'm expending some of my handgun ammo to shoot them. Uh, if he's placed tripwires, I wouldn't be surprised if he's popped one on a box. And, okay, that sounded like it... Okay, so I was going to say that one sounded like it was ticking then. So it clearly had some kind of bomb or explosive in it. So I thought I'd shoot it, but clearly splash damage and everything uh, actually hurt me when I was above. So that was a bit weird. But, oh, there we go. Saw a tripwire there. And, oh, there was another one. It's been sneaky. Nothing down this corridor for me to do, so I think I'm going to have to get a little bit creative here. And shoot that one. And there is another one just above me. But I'm not going to overtly worry about that one if I can help it. As long as I don't run backwards into it, I don't think I really mind. Got an I'll destroy it just to be on the safe side instead. It's got a coded panel and an item box. So that's going to be quite useful if we ever need to swap anything out. And I don't know what the code is. Okay, 0814. Okay. No, 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 it's 0514. Oh, come on, take a chance, you never know. Really? Um, I don't even know which one to take a guess at. Um, ah, and that looks like a definite trap that I don't want to be caught in, because clearly if I take a guess at the password and it's wrong, it's going to come down and it's going to skewer me. Just like that. And I didn't want that to happen to me, because that clearly would have impelled me. Um, but it does look like it's been set up the other side, so I'm going to have to be quite uh, quick at this. No? Is it moving? I probably shouldn't stare at it when I'm in its path, but let's go zero five one four. I don't know. I know he said it was 0814 before anyone says, but... Is there anything I can shoot, or do, or take a guess? Okay, so it won't even let me take a guess now. Um, the door's locked. Ooh, that looks like the clown from last time. Oh, and an ominous door opens, so clearly we're going to go through it. Gotta say, I probably lucked out a little bit of that. Uh, two boxes in that room and shot one of them. Didn't even go near it. Uh, didn't think I was going to take that risk. And just managed to destroy the other box. That's quite cool. Um, being a bit adventurous, running down this corridor. Oh, there's a trip wire there. Luckily, I noticed that. And a four legged molded deciding to run at me. Oh, this game loves me today. Um, so I think we'll carry on through this way. And, okay. Oh, there's a trip by that. Or a bomb there, shall I say. So let's destroy that. And, oh, there was another one right above there. Luckily I saw the red light. Is there any more? Yes, there is. There's one right there. And another. Okay, so there's two. And there's a box. I don't trust it, to be honest, so I'm going to move away from it and shoot it. Luckily, I did get away because that was actually booby-trapped. It didn't leave anything for me, so that's not very nice. But we did get an antique coin. So, of course, if we go back to the trailer, we can put these in and potentially get the 44 Magnum that I've been hoping for for so long. And I hate it when it goes really dark because that 
cone means there's going to be either enemies or trip wires that I should really be paying attention to. And I thought I heard a molded. Yep, that's definitely one shotgun blast. I think that caught more of its shoulder than anything. Uh, yeah, took his arm off. And of course it lunges as I take the second shot. Two molded there, take out its foot. And then just utilize one of my flame rounds for my grenade launcher. Take those out. Wow, I am doing really bad with those headshots today. I should have really taken him back to all the tripwires. That would have been probably a good idea. But he's dead, he's dead. Wow, and the molded that I shot on the floor didn't die. That's intriguing. But all of them are now dead, so that's always quite handy. Wonderful. There's a Mr. Everything Everywhere. I'm very surprised I managed to actually see that. Uh, I took a guess where it was and just managed to catch out of the corner of my eye. Get some shotgun shells. And some gunpowder. Clearly means something's going on here. They don't normally give so much ammunition in such a short space of time. Or maybe they knew we were fighting three molded and decided to give us it back. Who knows? And so we got a door there, we got a pathway. That's where I saw a red light there. I did indeed. And it's that bomb. Okay. Clearly either my drop my shots are dropping there or that wasn't a bomb. And it doesn't seem to be any trip wires in here. We do have some solid fuel, some more shotgun shells a save location and a tape player, so just in case we decided to watch some more tapes. I don't know. And what can I get rid of for the minute? Because I want to stock with, with as much ammunition as I possibly can. Steroids, I can't really put those back in the thing, so I'm going to obviously use those. Steroids increases your health, of course. So my max health has now increased. And what can we do here? So burner fuel would be probably quite handy. That would be quite handy. Just going to save it just so we just keep our progress for what we've done so far. I don't really want to have to go through all those exploding bombs again, uh, which is always a good thing. And just taking a couple of seconds there. I do apologize. And there we go. I'm going to quickly switch across to the pistol then. And I'm going to go explore have a little bit of a look around this pathway and see what we can see. By the looks of it, that didn't look like a bomb that I was shooting at previously. It just looked like a big giant button. So clearly I wasted a couple of shots, which might come back and bite me in the backside, but you never know. And I see a drop down with a couple of more boxes. I see two boxes, um, some kind of something on that barrel. So I'm a little bit worried about going down there. But we got some strong chem fluid. So of course we might be able to uh, get some enhanced handgun ammo should we so want it. It was a button indeed. And I think soon I'm going to have to make that leap of faith and just jump down there. So got that one box. Lucky I did shoot it from a distance because that one was rigged with an explosive and there was a box in the corner which is shot out. Looks like something with batteries in it that we're going to have to probably uh, put the last one in. Uh, but before we do that I'm just going to quickly run back, arrange the inventory and give it another quick save just so I'm getting as much uh, ammo as I possibly can. Because of course we've got tons of uh, combinable items then in our inventory and I want to make sure I'm making the most out of it. Um, of course, once you do all of these sort of combinations uh, with a strong chem fluid and the normal chem fluid, you will actually get a cheeky trophy for it. Um, so that's always useful. Not necessarily something that you can go out your way to do, or you should go out your way to do, but if you want it, it is always there. And of course, as you've probably seen through these playthrough episodes, there is plenty of opportunities for getting it. So uh, you're never going to be strapped for and combinable items, but of course depending on what difficulty you're doing it on, you may need to wait a little bit for things such as like the strong chem fluid or the solid fuels, 
but there is plenty of this about on normal as we're doing in this particular run through. So we take the big leap of faith there and drop down into this new area, of course. Take care of the boxes straight away. I want to make sure that there's no explosives, nothing to worry about. We've got a little bit of burner fuel there. And I think now is the time just to have a little bit of a look around. Obviously, it doesn't look like we're getting attacked by any enemies just yet. Big freight elevator on our right hand side there. And that looks like a battery. This is power battery, so that's intriguing. Get some more burner fuel. Uh, so this gets me a little bit wide when they leave health items, burner fuel, and everything like that just littered about. We've got some speakers there as well, so that probably isn't going to go down that well with us. Looking forward to whatever Lucas, the crazy member of the Baker family, has in store for us. Of course, we did look down this way. I'm just making sure that there's nothing hidden on the fences there. thought there might have been a statuette or something. So the first thing, thing, the first thing that we want to do there, well, I stumbled on my words a little bit, is to put the battery into that container, unfortunately causing a little bit of a short circuit there in explosives. Okay, that's quite weird, and that looks like a big fat molded. So I'm gonna <laughs> be a little bit cheeky and uh, take a couple of shots, and he just decides he wants to vomit everywhere. So, mmm, lovely. Gotta love this music as well, this really adds to the ambiance. And uh, I don't know much about these fights, but I definitely don't think I want to be hit by that uh, spewing disgustingness. Uh, that's how I deal with hardships. Okay, well, I've got a shotgun for that, so I don't really care not being that, uh, that accurate with it. Utilize the burner, burner fuel. Um, this isn't really that affected against the molded, or not how I've noticed, to be honest, all the molded I've come across. Utilizing the burner hasn't really done that much to it, unless I'm doing it completely wrong, and I think, stuff it. Let's just get a bit old school and use uh, the flame rounds, of course, our, our most powerful weapon there for it. But looks like I easily did that. So the fat bloated one is down. Is down, we have completed that barn fight, so clearly it wasn't that difficult utilizing a couple of clips of handgun ammo. I think I went through about six shotgun shells, about 80 burner fuel then, and one grenade launcher shot, so not massive in terms of the amount of ammo that I am currently carrying, but still quite a lot just to be wasting on one enemy. So I'm a little bit worried how things have got immensely quiet after that. Uh, just keeping an eye out still for those trip wires. You never know what they're going to do. Never really know what the crazy Baker family people have in store for us. Of course, we have destroyed two of the Baker families. Um, members, we've got Marguerite Baker. She died. Uh, and so did Jack. We chainsawed Jack and sort of uh, burnt Marguerite Baker to death. Can't forget the antique coin hidden on the shelving there. And we've got Psycho Stimulants, so I'm just using those just to give us a little bit of an edge, making sure that we're not missing any valuable ammunition or anything like that. As you can see, there's nothing nothing in that area. And I'm just going to backtrack just a tiny bit here into the room which we had all the explosive tripwire traps in, just to make sure I hadn't missed anything from there. Luckily we did, because we managed to pick up some more 44 Magnum ammo. Of course, we haven't got the 44 Magnum just yet. That's still in Zoe's trailer. We hadn't got enough uh, antique coins to be able to do that. But that's not bad. Okay, so now we're just going to utilize our inventory system there. Make sure that we're getting rid of everything that we don't need before we input the code. I think it was 1408, hopefully I'm right on that. Enter, so we have opened the door. Oh, okay, so it's a test of skill, no cheating. Ah, he wants us to get rid of all our items, so I think we're going to have to do that. But luckily, if it's anything like the happy birthday tape, we know our way of getting through the next area. Okay, so he actually means everything that we've got. 
I thought he just meant weapons, but clearly it meant everything. I suppose that makes sense, because if we had psychostimulants, then we wouldn't really need to worry about anything. But clearly we're under the influence of them, so it sort of defeats a little bit of the object, to be honest. But hey, never mind. So this does look like it's going to be a repeat of the Happy Birthday tape. Of course, if you haven't seen that tape, this is going to be the first time that you're coming across this. So basically the main job of this is to put the candle on the birthday cake, as you can see in front of us, uh, being very careful then of um, the water. I am not going to grab that winding key, actually, because the last time we did, we put oil on the floor, which then burnt up the cameraman Clancy Jarvis in the sewer gators episode that was in the first tape that you saw, go the way back in episode 1 or episode 2 of the series. Well, that's going to get a little bit confusing there. But I think our main interest of this is just getting through the door in the corner and utilizing as much as we possibly can. Hopefully we can get through this without dying like Clancy Jarvis. Of course with this you need the winding key and the quill. Um, one of the things that you need, unless you know the code, is going to be this dirty telescope. This will tell you um, the configuration for one of the locks, which is just by the burning uh, barrel, or by the barrel with the winding key in it, shall I say. Um, no water is coming out, so there's actually nothing that you can need to do for about that. Uh, the one thing that you do get the code for is you need to wash off the dirty telescope with the water coming down from the spouts near the birthday cake, and then come on back to those uh, configurations of TV screens enabled to get us there. Obviously the quill goes with the crazy clown configuration in the corner by the toilet, but of course we know the code for this already, because we've done the birthday tape, it's going to be loser, unless they've changed it. Nope, they haven't, so that's absolutely fantastic. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to go in here and grab the valve handle, run back into the location that has the birthday cake in, and use the valve handle on the valve just around the corner from it. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this as well. I have no need, but I think why not repeat things? I don't mind at all. Of course, with this, we're going to unluckily get a pin stuck in our hand. This is the same hand that got chopped off in the first episode, but it's been stapled back on with some great medical skill. And is so far it hasn't fallen off, which I'm quite pleased at. I've got to say, Ethan can be put through an awful lot of torture. He's had his hand chopped off, he's had sort of food forced down his throat, he's come across molded and infected, and he hasn't decided he wanted to kill himself yet. Um, which is always good. Not that I want Ethan to kill himself, but I'm just saying that in the situation as him, I probably would be thinking of the cheek, cheeky and easiest way out as I possibly can. Of course, there we go. We've put the candle on the cake so nicely like that. And of course, same as with the happy birthday cake, the cake explodes, unfortunately. I think the promise of the cake was a lie. And of course, He's not going to get very happy, so he's just dropped some dynamite sticks. Uh, 20 seconds, what can I do? I can't stick it in the barrel. I can't stick it in that thing. Uh, they've locked the door behind me. So clearly I'm just going to stick it in this hole in the wall once I clear a board. Like, yeah, like He-Man. And um, just drop that there very nicely. And I'm going to back away as quickly and as much as I possibly can. Either way, Lucas, that wasn't very nice. You should have let me out of here. You promised... Okay, that looks slightly creepy. Clearly you were in that chair a minute ago. Otherwise a big strong gust of wind clearly made it. And that looks like Maya and Zoe, the first time we've actually come across Zoe Baker. Um, I'm still under the illusion that she's probably going to be some bad person. But you never know. Hello, Nathan. Which is actually Lucas, but I'm gonna call you Nathan because I don't like you. Guess that's not in the cards. Not yet. Lucky me. Look, unless you have any more surprises up your sleeve, I suggest oh. you. <laughs> now that would be telling, Ethan. And I don't do spoilers. 
Wow, he really is a grade A dick, to be honest. Um, I've clearly managed to get away from him as much as possible, and I do have now have the D-series head. Not like this is something I want to be carrying around with me, because it looks absolutely gross. But for the essence of the story, we're going to have to. First thing I want to do there is just get all my inventory back, uh, discard everything from that crazy room that we didn't need, and then I'm going to save it, and that will probably be that, uh, probably be the end of this uh, episode in this Let's Play series of Resident Evil 7, Episode 8. Hopefully you've enjoyed it so far. If you have, please don't hesitate to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to show your appreciation. Um, I respond to all my comments as well, so anything good, bad, or any feedback you could give would be greatly appreciated. Hopefully as well, you stay tuned for the next episode in this Let's Play series, where hopefully we manage to find Zoe and Mia and escape this crazy hellhole. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a lovely day.